price index, cost of living, COLA, whatever, adjustment, give them that 2%, whichever is the highest. But, you know, we can't just let them go for 10 years and not have any increase. If that's the case, I want to, you know, deal like that somewhere. Other board members' comments? Is there any way to wrap up the utilities in the, in the lease agreement rate and take that out of the equation? Finance director says that gets difficult to do. I'll let her come up and talk about it. But we, it's in a reimbursement uh, situation now, so they're paying an actual cost based on square footage for the okay. meter that's on the health department portion okay, of the building. It's metered separately. Metered okay. separate from I, this I, building. I understood it differently. Oh, oh, the oil, fuel, oil, water, and sewer, all that's metered once for this whole complex. But their electric bill is okay. metered separately. And plus, we also, I mean, we have janitorial, which goes up. That's included. Um, the water. The, the fuel, if we have a good winter, it's not bad. If we have a bad winter, it's astronomical on this building. And if we wrap it into the, the rent, we don't have any way of equitably sharing that. Unless we make the rent, you know, worst case scenario. Yeah, exactly, which they're not going to buy that either. <laughs> but, but can I, did you, did you just say we pay for the custodial services? We bill it to them, yes. Oh, we bill it. We, okay. we bill everything pro rata to them, whatever yeah, they... But, yes. but she said we pay for that. I thought that was something that we were giving them extra. Oh, no. So. Okay. This is a Commonwealth agency. It's Correct. the Virginia Department of Health. I know the Commonwealth can afford this amount of money. I think I, I give them this much a year. I think we need to allow staff to make the changes that... They've, you know, that they've outlined to us, send it back, and and they're paying what they're paying now. Ms. Long? Yes, uh, Chairman Seeley, my one comment I would have on this is the section where it says the county version contains the clause that reads, increase the amount of rent by more than 2% for any subsequent year during the initial and substantial subsequent term uh, and then giving the lease 120 days notice. I wonder if this could not be, to me, if I was signing a contract to sign something that says you're going to, you know, you can increase it by the minimum of 2% or 20%, but maybe we could fix it by just putting increase the amount of rent by no more than 2% or by the CPI for the year. Because that's a little nerve wracking and that may be what they're looking at. You know, if, if we wanted to get rid of them, we could do a, a 10 or 15% increase. And that would make me nervous if I was signing this contract. So that would be either put no more than or put CPI in there would be my recommendation. We don't want to get rid of them. That's right. correct. That's the thing. We don't want to get rid of no, them. No, we don't. Well, we don't. But we don't want to lose if money. You were, if you were looking at this and it said that you, we have the right to increase every year more than 2%, then it would make me a little nervous. So put no more than 2% or we have the right to increase it based on the CPI per year. And then I think they would feel more comfortable with it. All right, let's, so do we want to do and or consumer price index or 2% or do we want to say the lesser of the two? I mean, we, we okay with either or whichever is less? So the, and the, ma the max would be two, the max would be 2%. The rest of their issues here, I just, huh? We can't, we can't fix those. So my recommendation is to fix that and, and tell them, you know, this is where we are. Do you need a motion to do this? I think that would be helpful so they would know that the board actually has, has seen this and discussed it. And, and, the, and with that, we do recommend that we put in the section she wants about, we have agreed to some changes that we haven't done to, as we move the dental clinic around and some things. She wants that append, appendix in the agreed changes some of which they've got to pay for but she wants that sort of listed out of what what those changes are do we, so we have, have a those? problem i don't think i have them uh so we got to put a doorway in we've got to fix a little bathroom pass through where they do uh, samples specimen samples 
the type, that type of thing. And, and they're willing to pay for that, or they yes. think we, no, they're they, willing to pay for yes. that? Yes. Yeah, the, the, the bathroom issue, they are. We're putting the firewall up in the, in the fire door. Up. The building official has been down there and looked at it. And I think he's actually looked at it with um, uh, Mr. Shebel's, uh staff about what we've got to do to, it's just a little restroom. Currently, the restroom for specimen samples is in the dental clinic space. You actually go in the dental waiting room and go in, and they're trying to separate those spaces out. So we we do have some work that we've agreed to do. That they we've given them. I think that's been going on since the summer. We've given them some idea of cost, didn't we? Not, Mr. Schiebel. So that, I think they just want us to break that out in, into the into the lease. That, that's the only other thing, and we agree to that. I agreed to that in my email back to her that I didn't have any problem with that part because we have agreed in principle to what's got to happen down there to separate the spaces. So you, you can delineate those expenses mm -hmm. and, those, and, that, and that service. Correct. And then we're going to the change the, not to increase by more than 2% or CPI. Or CPI. Yeah. Um, any other questions? I mean, I, we've got to put this in some sort of a motion. So, it, is this a ten-year term? Right? Is this an, a self-renewing lease, or I just didn't see a defined term, start, finish, proposed. I see something on the page one, like on the county version, two thousand twenty-five. But I was just just a curiosity. We gave them a ten-year lease. Before they moved in, what ninety two? No, no, no. We didn't get here until oh five. Yeah. Is it oh five? Yeah, ninety two. We were still at the courthouse. It was, it was about oh five, somewhere in there. They were part of the funds we used to pay the debt service again. So I mean, in the in your negotiation, make sure they understand we want them to stay. We also want to prevent the fact that we could lose money if costs go up. That's the only reason we got that in there. And, and we do have maintenance that we have to do on the on the facility. And There's we take care of the maintenance, heating and cooling that changes, that kind of stuff. So right. All right. So the two percent and the the changes that Mr. Cully has agreed to, not to exceed two percent CPI, and the changes to the facilities that have been agreed to by both entities. Is that close enough for a motion can I get a a motion to that's easy just to say so moved <coughs> so moved do I have a second oh, I thought I was doing that all right, oh you did <laughs> all right no. I have a motion for mr. Thomas a second from it works either way miss long to approve the changes from uh, that staff has agreed to at the Health Department plus the CIP and not to exceed 2%. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Agenda item number six. An ordinance amending Article 3, Chapter 21 of the Code of Caroline County prohibiting Bless. the keeping of dangerous, exotic, wild animals, or dangerous, wild, exotic, or vicious animals. Nobody wants to touch this. And, and let me say that we have, I will say that I am sympathetic to the, to the person that is here who owns the animals that has had them for a very long time. She's been here since 92. I personally don't want to see us take those. Um, I think we at one point agreed that we would do another 60-day extension to facilitate how we were going to get to the end of this because we are now with a new board and I think there needs to be just some discussion amongst the new members of where they want to go is there a, is there a, a sense to do another 60 days which we'd have to advertise between now and the next board meeting to actually do that hearing for the 60 days and then make some headway on what we're permanently going to do or, or, or could I add Yes, sir. Um, of course, we haven't advertised anything. The soonest that we could have a public hearing on anything would be the February first meeting in Ooh. February, and um, you could. Uh, there would be a little bit of time um, where we would revert back to the old thirty-day ordinance before that public hearing because the extension would have run out. Run out, correct. 
um, but you could certainly authorize us to advertise for the February meeting the permanent 90 day instead of 30 because I think we've all decided or we've heard that, that maybe it takes longer for somebody to move out of the county and, and dispose of their exotic animals than 30 days and so that maybe at least that minimum fix buys us some time in case we run up on another case of these between now and then that we can at least fix that while y'all work to decide what criteria you want to add in to the uh, ordinance uh, moving forward. Ms. Long. Mr. Chairman, I would agree to, to extending permanently to 90 days uh, with health regulations and transporting animals, trying to find veterinarians that can do health certificates for exotics. 30 days is just not sufficient to find a proper location and to, to relocate an animal. Uh, therefore, I think that should become a permanent part of the ordinance, and I would, would move to do that. I also, <coughs> while I've got the mic, want to say I'm not real happy with this ordinance. I realize why it was done, and it's, it's certainly something is better than nothing, but I would like to do some research and possibly in the future come with some amendments to this, to this ordinance. Um, that might better fit our community as opposed to one that we basically designed from Fairfax County. Uh, but at this time, I would move that we go with a 90-day permanent change to the, to the ordinance. I have a motion. Do I have a second? A second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of, of advertising for the 90-day um, I guess it's not extension, but 90-day period. <coughs> Changing the 30 to the 90 days. We adopted an... Wait a minute. So, the, wait a minute. I think we have a material change. Hold on a minute. So, if we don't... If we, if we go forward with the 90 days, we actually don't do anything with the emergency ordinance that's in place. Uh, Expires. Just let it die. So then we would go to a 90-day period. And if, we, if, if other changes were, were wanting to be made, we would have to do them in that 90-day period, or do we have to enact another <coughs> emergency ordinance? your mic on you could do them in conjunction with the 90-day ordinance or if you came up with things later you could you know re-advertise and amend that ordinance okay but we would have we have to work in that 90-day framework no, not you the 90 days to, no. Nothing to do with anything. You, no I'm just making sure but understands that the max we have is 90 days starting from the end of the emergency ordinance, which ends 1 February. 90 days for the emergency ordinance to be in effect. This won't be an emergency ordinance. The emergency this ordinance goes out, out of February 1 February. 1st. Right. So February 1st, anybody with an exotic animal would then only have 30 days. No, would have 90 days with what we're going to do. We're going to Well, but there's a about a week. But, a week or but so we wouldn't there. have we wouldn't have advertised or changed the ordinance before. You're that. correct. So it would be 30 days. So between February 1st, 1st and the time we actually adopt our ordinance, February 12th or whenever that day is, that two-week window, if you get caught, it's only 30 days. Correct. After that, when we create a new, <coughs> excuse me, a new ordinance, then we would set 90 days as the permanent time frame. Correct. So it's only that two-week window that somebody gets caught, there's an issue. And if they get caught, we'll do an emergency ordinance to give them 90 days. Okay. Let's just let this die and ad advertise for one in February. We have the motion. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay, we have one nay. I'm going to do... Mr. Thomas? I voted aye. Mr. Forehand? Aye. Ms. Long? Aye. Mr. Underwood? Nay. Mr. Black? Aye. And I vote aye also. Agenda item number seven. I take it this is Mr. Schiebel. <coughs> Did 
you have a chance to read this whole thing? The Solid Waste Ordinance. No. Nancy, you did? Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Tonight's agenda, agenda item on unfinished business is the discussion of a proposed amendment to the Solid Waste uh, Convenience Site Manual, um, specifically dealing with construction debris. Currently, Caroline County does not accept construction debris at any of our facilities, very small amounts from residential. Uh, however, we do not accept any from commercial customers and contractors. Um, many of the board members have received several complaints and concerns from small businesses uh, wishing to be able to dispose of constru construction debris, excuse me. Um, and as such, uh, we have put forth recommendations of how we would proceed in handling the construction debris. Uh, we understand that a roll-off container to do small construction projects typically run between three and four hundred dollars. So if you're replacing some windows in a house, um, it really drives up that cost when you're having to rent a large box like that to dispose of windows or siding um, as they can't dispose of that at our facilities. And really, the, the smaller guys are saying it's kind of outpricing what they can do. Uh, the county has looked at addressing this uh, by including small items that are listed in, the, in your board summary. Uh, each of those items would be accepted at the Bowling Green convenience site exclusively. Um, we would be able to handle that material there. We have scales so as they come in we would be able to charge by the ton so that we'd actually have an exact amount of what they're disposing of. Um, we also currently have that facility uh, currently accepts tires for commercial and we are set up to be able to handle uh, billing for those matters. Uh, as this would end up being a billing issue as well as we bill contractors for what they're disposing. Some of the concerns that we have are materials that we would not accept, um, such as lead paint, friable asbestos, um, drums and things of the sort, railroad ties and oversized items. Uh, we do have an issue with trying to identify lead-based paint. Um, we don't have the time nor the, the staff or the experience to be able to identify lead-based paint without going through specific EPA training. Um, to confirm that whether it is lead-based or not. Uh, we also have an issue with asbestos of identifying whether it is asbestos or is not, and if it is, is it friable or non-friable. So there is some concerns that we have safety aspects from staff of being able to handle this material as it's being dumped as well as when it's disposed of. Uh, if the material were to be accepted unbeknownst to us and we get to the landfill um, and they identify it as such, then the county would be responsible for cleaning uh, and having a cleaning contractor come in and dispose of the material appropriately um, if it were to be dumped. If it was caught before it's dumped, they could turn us away and we'd have to find an alternative way of being able to dispose of those materials. Uh, the only way we can kind of figure that to, to try to get around that to make sure we're trying to cover that uh, is to provide a bill of lading that each of the contractors as they come in describe what they're dumping and provide to us uh, and at least we would know what went into that container overall and which contractors dumped in that. Uh, I think we'd still have a hard time trying to identify which contractor actually dumped that specific material. Um, however, that would allow us to at least be able to track contractors. Um, the contractors do have um, ethics that they have to follow and, and licenses and they would be responsible if we could identify them as the appropriate uh, contractors responsible for dumping something that they weren't supposed to and the EPA would actually enforce all of the uh, enforcement regulations on that if that were ever to happen and we could identify them. Looking at our cost, uh, we've got a tipping fee uh, at the current landfills of $31.50 per ton. Uh, we've included all of our expenses for vehicles, replacement of vehicle, wear and tear on vehicles, uh, staff time, mileage, fuel, and everything. Uh, we've come up with $29.25 for our operation and maintenance cost, giving us a grand total of $60.74 per ton um, at, at today's current cost. Uh, we recommended a $65 per ton if the board so chooses to move forward with this uh, to be able to cover some indiscretionary things as far as fuel costs going up. So if fuel jumps another dollar, we don't have to come back before the board and ask for a change in this. So we'd recommend starting at $65, which would cover all of our costs for manpower, transportation, as well as all the tipping fees. In your current manual, uh, we've actually proposed in there all the different amendments that we would do on item number 11, and it specifically lists each one of those. Um, if the board wishes to do so, we would ask that they would uh, approve each of those. 
We have also in section four that we would like for you to at least to consider, even if you don't move forward with the construction debris. Um, if you remember about four or five months ago, we changed some terminology in another section. It used to say um, acceptable waste that was bagged or containerized up to 55 gallons. Um, we've asked that we change that to not to an exceed amount greater than 55 gallons um, receptacle. And what that does is you get people all the time that can't come in with a five gallon bucket of stuff or come in with a trash bag or stuff or just stuff in the back of the truck. And if it's not in a bag, technically we can't accept it. Or it's not in a 55 gallon receptacle, technically we couldn't accept it. So we'd like to at least change that to, to an amount not to exceed. And this is underneath of the disposal of residential waste where we allow local businesses to be able to dump uh, household type trash at each of the sites and allows them to dump up to an amount equal to a 55 gallon container. With that, I'll be glad to answer any questions that the board may have on this. Questions from board members? Mr. Forehand? Would you accept cash at these? We do not. Okay. So they would have to, the, your tenant would have to track account information? That's correct. They'd okay. have to fill out um, all the information that the treasurer's office would require um, along with either a social security number or a business uh, identification number for, in, uh, as well as all the information on the company so that we would be able to set an account up for them to be able to dispose of that. We would then have the treasurer's office bill them on a monthly basis for what's been disposed of. Okay. I don't see shingles anywhere in the, in the listing. Shingles are actually accepted uh, as non-friable shingles because there are friable as well that asphalt, we accept. Asphalt shingles, I'm yeah. Sorry. And we do accept shingles currently. currently. We can add shingles to that list because we do accept shingles from um, residents now, right. but we do not from commercial. So that could be added to that list as well. Okay. Do you have any way to compact? these roll-offs being dumped in through from the from the elevated area? We do not. Um, each of the convenience sites has one compactor for the general trash except for the Laysmith site which has two two compactors. Um, so we've got no way of compacting the open top boxes. We do have a knuckle boom truck that we use to pick up all of the metals uh, at the sites that we do try to push down and right. crunch it up the best that we can. Um, but typically we're, we're toting between two and maybe four tons if we're lucky up and down the road in these open top containers. So it's very expensive for us to transport open top containers. Would, um, would an in, a citizen be able to use the open tops as well? Uh, citizens currently can use the open top and they can dispose of these things currently um, in small amounts. With no fee? That's correct. Okay. This is strictly for profit right now that we're looking at. Right. How do you differentiate an end of, uh, a citizen versus a business? Most of the times you show up in a commercial vehicle then your uh, business um, will ask and if they're honest enough there's times where somebody shows up in a pickup truck with shingles um, and you see them in there from time to time you know it's hard if they tell you that it is you know that it's it's from their mother's house and next time it's their brother's house and it's their sister's house but right. you know it's hard for us to, to play the police in those things so uh, you know, we try it as much as we can and address that um, and question them when we can about those. But most of the time they're in a commercial vehicle when they're trying to dump okay. or do not have a county sticker. Yeah, I was going to ask, do we, do we require a county sticker or any other proof? We do. We require a county sticker, town of Bowling Green, town of Port Royal, okay. uh, Lake Landor or Lake Caroline stickers uh, work as well because we have people that don't live in the county um, that Bad. don't have county stickers but come to those properties. So we've included that as well. Uh, and then other forms of identification as far as a driver's license showing the county address or real estate. Something. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? <coughs> Mr. Schiebel, you mentioned uh, that training was available for staff to be able to be educated on items that shouldn't be dumped, such as asbestos. How expensive is that and how time consuming? Is that something we should be thinking about for anyone it, in your staff in the future? 
I don't believe so. Um, the asbestos training is a two-week training course, um, very intense, describing the asbestos disposal of it, removal of it, and it, you just don't have just the disposal. You've got to take the whole class. Um, so it's quite intensive when it comes to that um, and dealing with hazardous substances, and they deal with a whole measure of them, but asbestos is one of them. Um, that you would have to do. So trying to send each of our convenience site attendants to that so that as it's coming in can identify that. Uh, we've got 24, typically to, to 26 uh, part-time attendants at each of the sites. We'd have to send each of them to this type of training. Well, we're only six, seven at the Bowling Green site. So just be, I'm sorry, just be the Bowling Green convenience site attendant. So we've, we've got four that typically work there and then full-time staff that would be supervising them. Thank you. Mr. Thomas? Um, Thank you. Um, just curious, Mr. Sheeple, you, you said again, you made something uh, common about lead paint and things of that nature that we're not going to accept, but we have no real way of identifying lead paint containers. But once we transport, since our, our site is basically a convenience site, we, we take everything from there to someone else's landfill. Once we take it to their landfill and it's identified as something hazardous the county's then responsible, right? That's correct. So, yeah, but we're going to be responsible with respect to our use of somebody else's landfill. And then they could say at any point in time, you guys brought things in that weren't good. You now can't use our landfill or your costs now double. Theoretically, we don't really know what they would say. You know? They could ban us from, from disposing of the facility if it became an ongoing issue. But Mr. Sheeble, aren't the landfills, the, the, the uh, municipal landfills, actually able to take lead-based paint as long as it's not loose or friable? As long as it is on um, uh, older wood material that has deteriorated and it's be part of a renovation project, then the landfill itself can dispose of that. So it's not just, I mean, you couldn't take an open can of lead paint, I guess is my point. But I mean, I mean that wasn't really where I was going. Where, where I was going was by opening this up. We did a, I, I know Mr. Underwood and I did quite a few constituent meetings when there was a construction debris landfill proposed in the county. Um, I heard quite a few comments about the bad things that would go on with construction debris. And that was from someone whose entire job was to handle construction debris. So now we're going to take construction debris to our staff that is not totally understanding construction debris and disposal and then take the liability of that when we take it somewhere else. We, we've been taking construction debris at the landfill for as long as I've lived here. I mean, everybody is rent anybody who has bought a house in Caroline that was built before 1970 is susceptible to lead paint. If you but renovate I'm saying construction to be period, I'm not just saying just lead paint. I, and and the real issue is is it apples to apples? Is a construction debris landfill the same as us accepting construction debris and then taking it somewhere else? Not quite. I, mean, I, I don't see the equivalent. It's, it's so. red apples and green apples, but it's still construction <laughs> debris. But, but the fact that, it, that they have a site that's already set up, they're taking it. I, I just don't see how it equates. So okay, I, I I just wanted to make that point. Um, people that that have come to my <coughs> district meetings about construction debris said they didn't want it, and I think I'm going to hold to that. So I just wanted to make sure the county had liability if we did that, and that's my point and position. Thank you. Any further discussion? Everybody sees the changes that are being proposed by um, <coughs> Mr. Schiebel for the landfill. It is, it is a complaint that I field on a regular basis, small contractors that, that <coughs> can't afford to rent a 10 or 15 or 20 or 40 yard dumpster because they're doing small jobs. Um, currently there's no facility to take this to. This would give us the opportunity. Most of them are, are folks inside the county that are doing small jobs for folks in the county. Um, we've actually talked about a wall. I think that the, the folks at Germana this spring in here actually said that they would take a look at making that a project. 
which would facilitate being able to get stuff out of pickup trucks without throwing it over your head. Um, I'm not going to spend seventy thousand dollars for a wall. Well, I'm not either. And that's why I said get those folks to come. To I the understand, wall. but um, in in the interest of what is here from 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 public works. Board members want to want to table this. Do you want to move forward with this? I just need to see what everybody's thoughts are on this and how they want to dispose of this. Mr. Chairman, um, I do have have some concern. Uh, <coughs> you know, one of the things that we, we, as Mr. Thomas talked about, was the fact of the disposal of construction debris and, and now we're saying that we're going to I just do have I think we need to table and, and I'm not I'm not totally happy with where we are but um, I don't think it's a good idea at this point I, mean, I just need to think I would like to think about it a little more before I before I can support it I mean if you want to move forward that's that's up to you but um, at this point, I can't support it at this time. Thank you. Mr. Sheba, let me, this is, I'm not really wholly up on this topic, but where would someone like a small business, if we don't take it, where would they go with it? I mean, where would they go with this stuff? Some of the contractors, I understand, have been keeping it at the house. And when they get enough, they'll have somebody deliver a container to the house and then dump it. Um, some of them will actually go to, like, the King George landfill and dispose of it there for a fee, um, go down to Ashcake Road at the landfill there and dispose of those two locations, which are the closest places to be able to dispose of that. Um, typically, they're going to pay the, the at-door rate. Um, you know, our rate is, is thirty-one fifty. If you were to go in there and, and just want to dump, it's going to be more expensive because we're on a contract rate and we dump about 10,000 tons of trash a year. So they're probably in the, the $40 range to be able to bring a truck in and per ton. So uh, more than likely, if you're just disposing of some windows or some vinyl siding, you know, we're limiting it to a, a, an eight-foot pickup truck bed of stuff. So it's not like they'll be able to bring, you know, a whole bunch in at one time. They're going to have to load it and then take the truck back and come back. So at least we're trying to hold that down to help the small business. Um, can I ask you a question? Have you, speaking of small businesses, have you had a lot of them come to you? Um, uh, I've only so had two. And, and you're only going to do this at the Bowling Green convenience site? That's correct, because we've got to be able to have so, a way to, um, to be able to, yeah. to charge them for that. Yeah. So the only way, since we've got certified scales at that facility, they'd be able to come in there. Um, so, we've got more so, supervision there. Okay, that's good. That's good. So when Mr. Black redoes his house, He's going to drive all the way down 639 with his windows and shingles hanging out the back of his pickup truck to dump them in Bowling Green. And then he's going to go back home and get another pickup truck of shingles and windows and two by fours and drive all the way from Lady Smith to Bowling Green again. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Sheeple, did you say that if they go to King George, it would be $40 a ton, whereas we're going to charge 65 that's correct because we've got our transportation cost so we pay a tipping fee of thirty one dollars and fifty cents um, and then when you add in all of our cost uh, to be able to dispose everything from our fuel expenses to truck replacement cost to accumulated expenses of employees cost per mile um, all that comes to about a, a dollar ninety two cents um, per mile so when you actually figure in the trip cost over and back it ends up being twenty nine dollars and twenty four cents of actual county cost to do that so when you add those two numbers up at sixty dollars and seventy four cents per ton is what we would charge for them to be able to dispose of that oh, <laughs> I could drive a truck to King from Bowling Green to King George and stop and have lunch on the way back in Port Roll so for twenty five dollars okay thank you I guess my question is, how is it cheaper in King George? Because they don't have any transportation costs. Oh, right, right. right. They have the landfill. Yeah, okay. Just looking for how they, anybody wants to dispose of this. Mr. Chairman, I'll go ahead and make the motion to approve the recommendations as outlined as above. And we want to add shingles. Yeah, and add channels to the list. Okay. Is there a second to that? I'll second. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? 
Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Nays? Nay. Nay. Roll call vote. Mr. Thomas? Nay. Mr. Forehand? Aye. Ms. Long? Aye. Mr. Underwood? Nay. Mr. Black? Aye. And I'll vote aye. Motion carries. <coughs> Thank you. Agenda item number eight, <coughs> authorization to apply for assistance to firefighter grant Would a for the purchase to approve of... Be in order? Excuse me? Would a motion to approve be in order? Anytime. I would make a motion to approve the application for a grant for the purchase of a fire engine. Second. I have a motion and a second. <coughs> Any discussion? Can you get two? <laughs> <laughs> and we don't need the 150 until 2017. Late 2017. I, I believe it would probably be 2018 fiscal year. Um, given a 10 month build period, the design, the procurement. So, yes. You've come up with the biggest request and the fastest approval. Thank you, I appreciate Chief. appreciate it. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Item 8A, adoption of the um, <coughs> Mr. Chairman, health I'd like insurance. To, I'd like to move that we adopt the uh, health insurance provision adopt as provided. Adopt or approved. Approved, adopt. Thank you. Good boy. Do I have a second? The health care insurance as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 A nay. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Mr. Cully, capital project updates. We, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, we've included the capital projects update. Uh, as you can see, we are just about uh, complete of the radio system, but remember they've got to come back for that springtime test of the 300 some blocks. So we're holding out some, some funds on that. Um, Ladysmith Fire Station renovations are just about complete. We're working through some punch list items. Hope to have that complete in the next couple of weeks. School projects are moving along, as you can see, as you ride by. And that would be unless you have questions, uh, specific questions on capital projects. Do we have a percent complete on the school, the high school, by chance? Kevin's the ballpark? Here. Yeah, yes. Oh, there oh, he is. Jeffrey Honan's out there. Okay, we have two two people who oh. can give us a percent complete. Mr. Honan is in the audience. It, it's actually in the Mr. document. White. I just didn't far. Yeah, that's from the far the far right category. Yeah, that, that'd be for money. So I don't know whether that equates to the completion or not because that includes some money we spent. So we're, for. So we're about ten percent done. <laughs> yeah, we paid out ten percent. So. Ten percent good, stuff. Jeff. Ten percent project building wise is good. Are we close to on schedule? I got two head nods, one from the building official and one from... We're doing well. Okay. But didn't, we spend, didn't we spend $2 million in architectural fees? Correct. Not quite yet. 1.8. 2 million. And yet we've spent 3.5 million in those two projects. So we can no way be close to 10% in construction just based on the numbers 25 million dollar project and we spent remember the stuff in the ground goes is the fastest and the cheapest after you come okay. out of the ground when it gets more expensive I, I'm just trying to count That's I understand all, all right any further questions I believe we have one closed meeting or oh, one calendar, more well, oh, calendar events, events. correct we, um, February 11th is Vago County Government Day if you would like to attend that and uh, want us to help with the registration please get with um, Mrs. Hall to, to get that straight Alan and I normally go and so if anybody else would like to go we would gladly to take you up there if you'd like to to ride to Richmond with us for that um, and then the calendar if I scroll down here fast enough um, the county offices will be closed Friday and Monday, both you know state and federal holiday. Our next meeting is the 26th here at six. Don't really have anything else spread out on the calendar. Then our next meeting after that is the the uh, 9th of February, and then the 11th of February is the Vaco Day I, I spoke about, and then of course we're off for President's Day, uh, February. So December, January, February is a lot of holidays, and then it kind of dries up for a while, but. 
Oh. That would be all I have, unless you have any other questions or anything anybody needs on a calendar. Did we, I just got this in my, in my mail today. But tomorrow, Fort AP Hill is having a community leader's reception? Correct. Was that, that's not on our calendar, is it? Yeah, I don't, yeah that didn't make it. They sent an email? They probably did. I got a letter. I'm getting 100 a day now. So. That is tomorrow night. Uh, tomorrow, January 13th, 6 to 8. Do you want to attend? I was going to pass it to you as the chair. Oh, I, I've got it. I've okay. RSVP'd. Um, and you should be as a boarder. So should be. Yes. Closing board comments, Mr. Thomas? Uh, no, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the opportunity, though. Mr. Forehand? I'm good, thank you. Ms. Long? I'm fine, thank you. Mr. Underwood? Just one, Mr. Chairman. Um, bottom. I think about three weeks ago we had another accident on Jericho Road. Um, I want to make sure the board um, keeps that in mind. We talked to VDOT at our last meeting in December. But there has to be a safety study or something done on Jericho Road. There's just too many accidents, too many incidents occurring on that road, and we have to have something done in terms of a safety study there uh, immediately, I would think. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And I, I think we did ask them for a safety study, so hopefully when they come back, we will get that. Mr. Black? I have none, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I would just like to thank the my fellow board members for electing me as chairman tonight. I will do the best I can to get us out of here and and keep us on point as I can. And with that, uh, Mr. Black, if you will read the motion for closed session. Yes, I move the board convene in closed session pursuant to the consolation with legal uh, counsel and briefings by staff exemption. Section 2.2, 3711, uh, uh, period, dot A, uh, dot 7 of the Code of Virginia to discuss the status of several specific legal actions filed against the county. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. So we have a second. Motion to second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. We are now in closed session. Are we um, I move that the board reconvene. Oh, wait a minute. I move that the board, Caroline Board of Supervisors, certify that to the best of each board member's knowledge, only public business matters lawfully exempt from the open meeting requirement by Virginia law were discussed in closed meeting, which this certification applies, and only such public business matters that were identified in the motion convening the closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered by the board. Mr. Thomas. I so certify, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Forehand. I so certify. Ms. Long. I so certify. Mr. Underwood. I so certify. Mr. Black. I so certify. And I so certify. Um, is there a motion to come out of closed meeting? So moved, Mr. Chairman. I'll second. Does somebody want to read the motion? Mr. Chairman. No, that's a motion to come, to come out, out of closed, closed meeting. meeting. I said, okay. Now, is there a motion to come out of closed meeting? I did. I made the motion to come out. Okay. And I got a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Is there a motion as a result of closed session? Mr. Chairman, I move to readopt the emergency ordinance relating to exotic animals adopted on November the 24th, 2015, by changing the 90 day deadline therein to 120 days. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is that complete enough? Mr. Underwood, any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Roll call vote. Mr. Thomas? I vote nay. Mr. Forehand? Aye. Ms. Long? Aye. Mr. Underwood? Aye. Mr. Black? Nay. And I vote aye. Motion carries 4 to 2. Mr. Motion Chairman, to, move to adjourn. Jeff Gordon? Motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Adjourn. <laughs>